Today is Germ's Day Thursday. Today's germ topic is on that of the bacterium Clostridium tetani, also known as tetanus. And also, why do we need a tetanus vaccine? It's Germ's Day Thursday. Germ's Day Thursday, y'all. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. And if you are a returning visitor, then welcome back and a big thank you for your support. If you are new here, then welcome. I'm glad you are here. Hopefully we can become virtual friends and or virtual colleagues. On my channel, I talk about and share about nursing, nursing school related topics and tips, as well as health related topics, tips and information. Have you ever wondered what tetanus is and why you received a vaccine? Actually, you probably never even gave it a second thought you more likely received the tetanus vaccine as a part of your immunizations as a child, or even received a tetanus booster after some type of an injury, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, in regards to vaccines, you have probably heard of tetanus, but described in a combination with the pertussis and diphtheria vaccines, but in the abbreviated form of DTaP or Tdap or DT. These are a combination of vaccines against these particular infectious diseases. In this video, I'm going to share about tetanus. Please see my other videos for diphtheria and pertussis. I'll put a link in the card here. So be sure to find me every Thursday to every other Thursday for a new Germs Day Thursday video. Did you also know you probably have heard of tetanus before, but by its more common other name, which is lockjaw. Historically, Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, first described tetanus in as early as the 5th century BC. In 1884, Antonio Carli and Giorgio Rattoni from the University of Turin in Italy discovered the cause of tetanus to be from the Clostridium tetani bacteria, but it wasn't until 1924 that an actual vaccine was first developed. So what is tetanus? Tetanus is a bacterial infection caused by the bacterium Clostridium tetani, but known more commonly as lockjaw. The reason it is called lockjaw is due to how the effect of the bacteria causes muscle spasms, usually beginning in the jaw, with progression to the rest of the body. So how do you get tetanus? Tetanus is interesting in the sense that it is one type of bacteria that is not transmitted from person to person as many other bacteria, such as through coughing and sneezing. But unfortunately though, the bacterium Clostridium tetani is a common bacteria that is found in dirt, soil, dust, saliva, and feces. The bacteria then enters the body through contaminated objects via a puncture wound or cuts in the skin from a nail, a knife, a blade, or through an open wound. The bacteria then produces spores that in turn produce a toxin called tetanospasm. This toxin affects a person's neuromuscular system, specifically skeletal muscle, resulting in the spasms, kind of like a stun gun or electric eel, except this is through and from the inside of you. In our bodies, we have three muscle types. The first type, skeletal muscle, which is what we consciously control, is attached to our bones and allow us to move. The second type, smooth muscle, which we do not control, focuses on internal structures such as in the lungs, the stomach, and the intestines, and blood vessels. And a third type, cardiac muscle, which we also do not control and is specific to the heart. Like I said, the tetanus toxin affects a person's skeletal muscle, resulting in intense muscle spasms. You don't want to imagine if tetanus affected cardiac muscle like the heart, because if your heart spasmed like skeletal muscle, we would be dead. Tetanus usually develops between three days to three weeks after exposure, but it can take up to several months for symptoms to actually begin with months to recover after treatment and with as high as 10% of exposures leading to death. In 2015, there were almost 60,000 deaths worldwide due to tetanus. What are signs and symptoms of tetanus? Signs and symptoms include fever, sweating, headache, cramping of the jaw, trouble swallowing, high blood pressure and tachycardia or fast heart rate, muscle spasms, seizure-like jerking or absent-like staring seizures, all over the body pain and muscle stiffness. Types of tetanus. There are four types of tetanus. These are generalized tetanus, neonatal tetanus, local tetanus, and cephalic tetanus. The most common type of tetanus, which accounts for about 80% of cases, is generalized tetanus. This type starts at the head and makes its way down the body. It starts with trismus, which means gnashing, also another name for lockjaw, which involves the muscles of chewing. Then rhesus sardinicus can occur, which means a scornful laugh, and is a spasm of the facial muscles and neck muscles causing stiffness. This evolves to epistotonos, which is a spasming of body muscles, causing the legs and arms to become rigid, the arms are pulled up to the body, fists are clenched, and a backward arching of the head, neck, and spine occur. These muscles spasm the stiffness of the neck, abdomen, and chest may cause difficulty breathing. This can continue intermittently for up to a month. The second type of tetanus is neonatal tetanus, if a mother has not been vaccinated against tetanus, this can lead to generalized tetanus, the type that I just discussed. 
in newborns, usually from infection when the umbilical cord is cut with a non-sterile instrument. Neonatal tetanus is common in underdeveloped countries for this reason. However, if a mother has been vaccinated against tetanus, the baby is protected through passive immunity. This is where from the antibodies acquired from the mother are passed through to the baby. This is just another reason to be vaccinated against tetanus because who wants their baby to go through that? And because of this, neonatal tetanus is not common in developed countries where mothers have been vaccinated. A least common form of tetanus is local tetanus. Now this can lead to general tetanus, but local tetanus is where people have spasms or contractions in the area where the injury occurred, for example, a foot. Although it's rare, it does account for approximately 1% of deaths associated with tetanus, but usually when treatment is not sought. The most rare type of tetanus is cephalic tetanus. Although extremely uncommon, don't let its rareness fool you, as it has a fatality rate or death rate of about 25%. Why? Well, due to its complicating presentation and differential diagnosis. This type usually occurs due to an injury to the head area, whether it is a penetrating injury or a cut, and it can lead to trismus or lockjaw, as I just mentioned. And it can also lead to a facial palsy or an eye droop, mimicking a stroke. And physicians may not suspect this type of tetanus or tetanus in general. What are the complications of tetanus? Complications of tetanus include fractures of the bones due to powerful muscle spasms and death due to spasms of the muscles that control the airway and are the tetanus toxins affecting the nerves of breathing, nerves of the heart, and nerves of the brain. So how do you prevent tetanus? Tetanus is prevented through vaccination with the tetanus vaccine. In the United States, tetanus is rare due to its immunization program. Even then, most of all the cases of tetanus result from lack of vaccination. Remember, the tetanus vaccine is included in the Tdap or DPT and DT immunization combination with the T standing for tetanus. Prevention is the most important aspect in managing tetanus because there is no cure for tetanus and therefore, complications of tetanus can be life-threatening. Overall treatment focuses on symptom management until the effects of the tetanus toxin resolve. And with all that said, the reason that tetanus is rare in developed countries like the United States is because we are vaccinated against it. So remember when you hear about DPT or Tdap, that's T-D-A-P with a T being for tetanus, you now know what it means, what it is, what it can do, and why you need it. According to the CDC, tetanus vaccines are recommended for people of all ages with booster shots throughout life every 10 years. For all you nursing students or nurses, if you were to encounter a patient with tetanus, how would you care for them? Nursing interventions would include obtaining and monitoring vital signs every two hours, assessing and auscultation of breath sounds, maintaining a patent airway through positioning of the head, removing excessive secretions via suctioning, providing for safety for the patient, administering antipyretics and antibiotics as ordered, and encouraging fluids and nutrition. So if you found value in this video and learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like as it helps out my channel. And don't forget to share this video with anybody who may benefit from this information, those wanting to learn about vaccines like the tetanus vaccine, those with children, those that you know who are in nursing school, starting nursing school, or are pre-nursing, or those who have had a recent penetrating injury. I'm doing a series of videos about most of the vaccines that are needed for children from birth to 18 years of age, and also those for adults, including pertussis, diphtheria, tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, pneumonia, shingles, rabies, and smallpox. And if you are interested in health information and nursing related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be a part of my nursing channel and also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware when I make new videos. Please be sure to check out my many other nursing topic related videos, my nursing related music lyric videos here on YouTube and my YouTube shorts in which I created Germs Day Thursday like today and release new videos on most Thursdays to every other Thursday and Medication Mondays in which I highlight and share general information about certain medications and release new videos on most Mondays and also Sweet Saturdays in which I share and compare the amount of sugar in certain food products and release new videos on most Saturdays. Be sure to check those out to learn some quick tidbits of bonus information. And if you don't know what I was talking about when I mentioned my nursing songs or lyric videos, which are here on YouTube, but I also write and create nursing and health related educational music like the flu shot song, what is diabetes and the nursing process song to name a few. So if you like music and you want to learn a little something at the same time, you can listen to my music on almost all music streaming platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, Apple music, Pandora, etc. Also, be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I post blog articles weekly. I'll leave a link in the description for that. 
So be sure to find me here every Thursday to every other Thursday for a Germs Day Thursday video. So do yourself a favor and get the vaccine or booster. Protect yourself against the effects of tetanus. So until the next video, God bless and goodbye and watch out for tetanus. It's Germs Day Thursday. Germs Day Thursday, y'all. It's Germs Day Thursday. Time to learn a little bit about different germs. Time to learn about that bacteria and those viruses. Don't forget the fungus among us.